So when it comes down to overclocking your CPU, it definitely looks much harder than it actually is. So I wanted to do a beginner's guide on how to overclock your CPU and everything that ended up confusing me the first time that I tried to do this on things like how to actually enter the overclock, what numbers mean in your BIOS when you're setting them to overclock your CPU, how you set the volts in order for the wattage to go to your CPU for that overclock in order for it to be stable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hop on my computer and show you guys a couple of programs where you can test out your overclock and make sure that it's actually stable so that your PC is not going to crash in the middle of a video game or in the middle of editing something in an editing program and that sort of stuff. Now I do want to say, your BIOS is most likely going to look different than mine because I have an MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard. So like I said, my BIOS is most likely going to look different than yours, but everything that I'm gonna be going over in this video and what you need to be looking at in your BIOS in order to actually overclock your CPU is still going to be the same. It's just going to look a little bit differently, but they're going to be named the exact same thing and that is what confused me the first time that I ended up trying to do this because there was people that were like putting numbers in the BIOS in order to actually overclock their CPU and I was just like how are they entering those numbers what do these numbers mean and all of that sort of stuff so that is what this video is going to be about how to actually overclock your CPU what you need to select in order to overclock your CPU and how to actually select that and then the things that you actually need to worry about while you're in your BIOS to actually overclock your CPU. You are going to need to reset your computer in order for it to actually take effect. When you exit out of the BIOS, it's most likely going to ask you, would you like to save and exit? And if you screw things up, you should not worry about an overclock because if your computer ends up crashing, you are still able to turn your computer back on and go back into the BIOS and change things up. Your computer ended up crashing because it was turned on. So overclocking is completely safe. I don't want you guys to think if I'm overclocking my PC and it crashes, I'll never be able to turn my computer back on because that is not the case whatsoever. You can still go back into your BIOS and if you forget what you ended up changing around, you can just reset it to the factory settings and then you can go from there and start overclocking again. So overclocking is completely safe. Alrighty boys, changing plans. I did try recording my BIOS with my camera, but the audio was abysmal and it was pretty hard for you guys to see the text on the screen with me recording my screen with a camera. I do not have the ability to record my screen while I'm in my BIOS. So before I show you guys these programs, Cinebench and Cam, which this is like a hardware monitoring system. You can also see what your overclock speed is and all of that sort of stuff. I wanted to explain to you what you're going to see while you're in your BIOS and how you actually overclock your CPU and what you need to do. Now this right here is an overclock genie feature. If you have an MSI motherboard, you will most certainly have this, but I would not recommend you do that. I would just physically overclock your CPU because after you watch this video, you're going to know exactly what to do. This right here is an XMP to overclock your memory. So the reason that he does not have that there is because he has a generic brand of memory. So there's no profiles for that, you know, RAM that he ended up purchasing. But if you have something like G skill, you'll definitely have a profile while you're in your BIOS to enable that. But again, I would not recommend that you do that because it's going to confuse you like it confused me if you're newer to this sort of stuff. Now what you're seeing on the screen right now is easy mode. You will not have an overclocked CPU like this guy does the first time that you're in the BIOS. You will only see your overclocked speed of your CPU if you restart your computer after overclocking it. So if you have an i7-7700 like this guy, I'm pretty sure the factory setting for that is 3.4 gigahertz. So that is what you will see the first time that you're in your BIOS before you actually overclock everything. What you're going to need to do is this up here is the advanced mode. You're going to have to enter advanced mode in order to overclock your CPU. And this guy has it as F7. You should see somewhere on your screen, enter advanced mode. 
and then you're gonna have to go into that so now I'm gonna go into the next picture here so once you're in advanced mode this is what you're going to see settings is where you can reset everything if you end up overclocking it too high and you get a blue screen of death on your computer which is not a bad thing like i said you will still be able to turn your computer back on and enter the bios again you're just going to have to adjust the settings that is where you can reset everything back to default profiles this right here is where you're going to overclock everything and those are going to be the settings to overclock your cpu if you need to update your bios that is what this is right here the m flash is to update your bios i know that this, that's not what this video is about but you know that is what that is so settings what you're going to do when you're in your settings is like if you mess something up you can hit this right here and it'll say restore default settings backup whatever this and it'll give you a bunch of options just to either save your profile reset stuff see what you've done and all of that sort of stuff so that's why i'm saying you guys should not worry about overclocking because it's it's not going to do anything to your computer other than annoy you because you're going to have to do if you want to get the maximum performance which i would imagine most of you are going to be just like me and you're just going to do a little overclock so you can like somewhat see you know okay this is how this works i need to do this in order to do that and that is how I do this and then Google will be your best friend because I would imagine that a lot of you guys aren't going to just be getting like the newest of the new CPU when the new CPU comes out and then immediately start overclocking it there's a lot of people on Google that will post very safe and stable overclocks for a CPU and then there's also a lot of really awesome tech channels I'm gonna use Jay's two cents as an example because he's one of the pictures that I'm going to show you guys in the video and he's the one that I learned how to do this off of so this is what you're going to see when you enter your settings I didn't even need to explain it right there if you mess stuff up you can restore defaults this right here we've all been in that situation where we're in our bios we tinker with a hundred different things and then we're like what did I just barely do I don't remember anything you should do one thing at a time and then that's what you should stick with then you should go back onto your computer make sure everything is stable and then you can go back in adjust things higher like say you you overclock your cpu make sure everything is okay with that before you start tinkering with your ram before you start tinkering with your hard drives before you start tinkering with all of the other settings inside of the bios so if you mess stuff up you can restore your defaults and then this right here the discard changes is what i just barely said with tinkering with so many different things you can just be like i don't want to have a hundred different options where i'm not going to remember what i did and i'm going to have to restore everything to defaults so that's what that is right there um okay so this right here this is where your overclock settings are going to be so when you're in your overclocking settings you should go into the advanced mode when you click on this it'll bring you into advanced mode and then that is how you're going to overclock your cpu and that sort of stuff so this right here is your ring ratio that is what you're going to be overclocking and like say i want to overclock my cpu to 4.6 gigahertz that is what this guy has he has 46 and his CPU is at 4.6 gigahertz say you want to do a first time overclock you're newer to this and you just want to like you know get yourself where you're like okay I know what I'm doing now this is what this does and everything so you know you could go 40 right here and if you put 40 that would mean your CPU overclock would be 4 gigahertz if you had say as an example say you had 17 right here you had 17 right there that would mean your cpu speed would be at 1.7 gigahertz i realize that that's incredibly freaking low and nobody has a cpu that bad but i'm just saying like if you had the number 59 there that would mean your cpu is at 5.9 gigahertz overclock and that's what i'm saying that and also something that confused me before i forget about this you need to click this option and on your keyboard 
hit the numbers. So this guy clicked on the ring ratio. He typed in 46 with his keyboard and hit enter in order to change that. Like I said, guys, this is a beginner's guide and I'm just trying to explain things that confused me the first time that I ended up trying to do this. You do have an option to do it per core as well, but this guy had the option as, you know, just like all of them. So hopefully I have a picture here to explain. Okay, right here. Okay, good. Thank God. So what you just barely saw was him overclocking one thing which would apply that overclock to all of the cores on his cpu if you wanted to overclock each core individually say you wanted three cores to be 4.6 gigahertz which would be 46 and then you wanted three other cores if you had a six core cpu and you wanted the other ones to be like 4.3 or something you could you could do that with per core but i would imagine that most of you are just going to do the same thing everybody else does and you know put everything to whatever the overclock is and that is what you're seeing right here this is what you will see the first time that you load into your bios to overclock your cpu depending on how many cores you have you'll see either four cores six cores eight cores 12 cores etc it all depends on what cpu you have and it'll say auto so if you wanted to overclock your cpu to 4.6 gigahertz like this guy has you would click this right here it would highlight this entire line and then you would hit 40 you would hit 46 on your keyboard hit enter to save it if you don't hit enter you will not be able to click anything else and then for the next time you do this you would you're gonna have to do this to every single one if you select per core which is what i would recommend that you do you would again hit 46 on your keyboard hit enter to apply that 4.6 gigahertz overclock Then you would do the exact same thing for that one and the exact same thing for that one and then that is what you would have for your overclock which your ring ratio that is what you need to focus on again like i said i'm pretty sure that i already explained it that is what you're overclocking your ring ratio that is your cpu that is what you need to focus on to overclock okay so now we're going to go into jay's two cents the the baller that helped me figure all of this stuff out so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in here this is jay's two cents and this is the the guy i have the click bios 5 i have an updated bios but um which is the reason i use those images at throughout the video because that is what i'm familiar with but again like i said your bios will be different but like i said you, you you'll still be able to apply everything that i'm explaining to you so his overclock cpu is going to be 4.5 gigahertz because he has 45 selected right there and in order to do that he hit 45 on his keyboard and hit enter and I, I realize that I'm probably explaining this for like one and two year olds guys, but I'm trying to like help people with the things that confused me when I first started doing this. I'll be totally honest with you guys. When I first did this, I thought all I had to do was click this and it would give me a bunch of numbers on my screen to select. That is not what is going to happen. You're going to have to click that and type it in with your keyboard and hit enter, which honestly took me about 40 minutes to friggin' figure out. So... <laughs> And then it'll say 4,500 megahertz for his overclock, which means his CPU will be running at 4.5 gigahertz. If you have that XMC option that I showed you, the megahertz will be overclocked, which I'm newer to this myself. So you're going to notice my CPU is not overclocked like a complete boss that you're seeing on YouTube to the maximum settings because I'm still learning a lot with this myself, but this is a beginner's guide and I'm explaining to you, you know, what you need to do. And like I said, Google will be your best friend. If you see somebody post over on Google, the i7-6800K is safe at 4.0 gigahertz with a 1.28 volt for power or a 1.265 volt power, it's stable at that. And yes, I use Google to overclock my CPU. There's also people that have been able to get their CPU to 4.2 at 1.325 
and everything was been stable there. There's been a lot of people that get lucky and get up to like 4.4 with my CPU and all of that sort of stuff. But again, like I said, I'm still learning this myself. I want everything to be nice and safe, you know, but before I get my my first PC crash or second, actually, I've had few PC, <laughs> PC crashes because I, I, I enabled that XMP. So this right here, what he was explaining in his video, I still remember all of this. He's such a cool guy. Jay's two cents. I will put his video, his channel in the link or in the description below. Right there, what he's explaining is because he had that 4.5 gigahertz overclock, what you need to do for your voltage, this is your voltage option, your CPU core voltage. If you guys can't read that, you know, if you're watching on like a phone or something, your CPU core voltage is what you need to apply to your CPU. I'm pretty sure that he, in the video he also overclocked his RAM. So the VCCIN is because he overclocked his RAM as well to 2,666 megahertz. So he also changed it. I still remember everything from this video. It's the most helpful video I've ever, ever watched. So right there, you cannot see it because it's red with a red highlight. If your numbers go red, don't worry about that. If you're on Google, Google will be your best friend. Like I said, you know, like if you see a post, Tom's Hardware is the one, if you Google like, what is a safe overclock for the i7-6800K? You know, the options in Tom's Hardware would be the one that I would recommend because those are the ones that I used. But he put his to 1.35 volts in order to get his um overclock on his cpu and because that's a really high volt and your cpu is going to get really warm um it'll highlight that in red but you guys should not worry about your cpu getting hot if you have a cpu overclocked to max and your pc is not crashing anything between i'm pretty sure do not go if you put your cpu through a stress test Make sure it does not go over 85. You can you can go up to like 105, but I would recommend that you keep your overclock to where your CPU is at 85 Celsius. Again, 105 is fine. You know, if it's like under stress for like three hours or something, but I just figured your CPU is not gonna die. Within he was saying in his video the i3 95 i3 50 or what it was an i3 and he had it overclocked to maximum settings he had really lucky with a with a great core that was overclockable to the max and his cpu lasted for seven years and the only reason he stopped using that is because it was out of date and his motherboard died but that is what you need to focus on for your for your vaults for your cpu you should have an auto option there um and if you do just a small overclock for your first time auto is fine but if you have a higher overclock pushing your CPU up and up and up, you're going to have to start doing that manually. And that is what you need to focus on is the CPU core voltage. And that is what your voltage voltage will be with the websites that you're going to see on the internet and stuff. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I explained all of that sort of stuff as noob friendly as possible. So this right here is called cam it's an nzixt program and this is really really awesome i know like i said guys i'm newer to this myself i know i can overclock my cpu to like 4.6 gigahertz but i'm i started doing this about two weeks ago and i just did a really small one first and all of that sort of stuff so my CPU is only overclocked to four gigahertz right now. And I'm, I, I'm well aware I can go higher than that. So you don't need to tell me. <laughs> so that is what your clock speed is going to be. So if it says 300, 3,999, which is basically 4.0 gigahertz, you can also monitor your temperatures minimum while your PC is on and the maximum. And I've had my computer on all day rendering videos and that sort of stuff. So that is why my max is 45C. If you're overclocking a CPU, 
common sense you need a good cooler and like i said any temperature underneath 85 if you've been using your computer all day an idle temperature i would say a safe idle temperature is anywhere between 35 and 50. that is what i would recommend you know you keep all of that stuff at you can also make it much more enjoyable to look at and use this which i i have this open all the time just to make sure everything is cool safe and nothing is going to be broken but anyways guys this is called cam nzixt it's an incredible program i love it um and then yeah so that's cam i don't need to make the video longer than this so now i'm going to show you guys task manager which your cpu will show up at whatever like i said your whatever default cpu and that sort of stuff um 3.4 gigahertz is what the factory settings come at and whatever your speed is don't worry about that because it's not going to show your overclock speed until you actually like put it at 100 percent stress which is this program okay those are those are for a different video yeah that's how to update your bios um okay cinebench got this right here i'm also going to show you guys another one uh cpu z so this right here obviously you're gonna have to accept i'm not gonna run it while i'm recording or anything um but it'll show you all i've already done this so that the the orange one is what will show you your cpu and all of that sort of stuff so i got 1210 and like i said I, I i know you don't have to tell me i can go way freaking higher than 4.0 giga or yeah 4 gigahertz and it'll compare it to other things that are similar to your cpu this is just your graphics card and i don't know why mine isn't there anymore i'm pretty sure that i saved that but anyways this is called cinebench and it's a benchmark thing it'll render out a thing right here i'm sure you guys are if you're watching this video i'm almost 100 positive you know what that program is so i'm also going to show you guys this program okay i didn't need to restart the recording or anything so this right here this will show everything that your cpu is this is a this is probably the most known program to look at your cpu and that sort of stuff um it'll tell you what cpu you have you have the i7 6800 and this is all of your normal settings like everything is like what everything is when you first get your cpu this right here is your overclock speed so my multiplier because i have a 4.0 i have a 4 gigahertz overclock that's how you can make sure if you don't want to install this program right here cam um that is to make sure that you have everything saved and all that sort of stuff this right here is also really cool you can um like i said i'm not gonna bench it or stress it while i'm recording or anything like that but you can like you can reference and then your processor to compare your processor to what other people have and the closest one to me is a 6700 i'm pretty sure yeah this one right here is what the 6700 is so it'll like compare your cpu to the reference cpu and then if like say you have a cpu that is in um in the whatever things right here you can hit the validate and it'll set, send it over to the cpu z website to upload it so that other people with the same cpu as you can see it in their settings but yeah that's pretty much everything that i wanted to go over guys i hope that i explained this as easily as i could i know this video is way longer than it probably needs to be but i wanted to make this video because overclocking your cpu let me switch things here hold on because overclocking your cpu is not dangerous it it can get frustrating if you like go as the way i do it and the way i would recommend anybody do it if you're newer to this sort of stuff is go low and then work your way up instead of like going on the internet seeing somebody has this godly 4.6 gigahertz overclock with a 1.4 volts 
the higher volts you have on your CPU, the hotter it is going to get. So, obviously, the higher overclock you have on your CPU, the higher voltage you're going to need on your CPU, which means it's going to be running hotter and all of that sort of stuff. But having your CPU run warm, it's still going to last you 8, 9, 10 plus years. I mean, and I would imagine anybody that owns a PC that is into overclocking or even looking at this video to overclock something, you are going to be upgrading your PC within 10 years from now, you know? But um, if you guys get the blue screen of death, and I'm going to show you guys this has happened to me. And it, it happens to everyone. Whoops. Hold on one sec. Let me go into my gallery. You don't need to worry about this because everybody gets it you know everybody come on phone that right there that is what you will see if you try overclocking something and then as soon as that happens your pc will restart you hit your delete button on your keyboard again and all you have to do is reset your settings in your bios and boom, you're back to one. You can turn your computer back on if you don't want to deal with the overclocking anymore. You're just like, I want my computer to get screwed up. You can just restore everything, boot back up your computer, and you'll be good to go. But overclocking is not dangerous, and your computer will get like a 20... If you're newer to this, I would say your PC is probably going to get between a 15 and 20% performance boost, which is what I have because I, I've only overclocked my CPU to 4.0 gigahertz on google it says there's people that get this thing up to 4.5 4.6 and all that sort of stuff but the majority of people that i see you know the majority of the posts because every cpu is different and like even like the same cpu as you have if somebody else has the same cpu like if i have an i7 6800 and my buddy kyle has an i7 6800 one of us could have a better CPU that's better at being overclocked. So he could have like a godly CPU and hit the jackpot on it and is able to overclock his CPU to 4.6 gigahertz, but I can't manage to get mine past 4.4. That is because every single CPU is different. So if you see a bunch of posts on the internet that say, I got my CPU to 4.2, it's really good, it runs nice and stable. Then you see a couple other ones that say 4.4 is awesome, it's really stable, but you only see a very limited amount of people saying 4.6 is running amazing, it's freaking beastly god CPU. Stick with the lower ones first, make sure everything is running fine, and then move up from there. And you'll get more comfortable with doing this you'll feel better about doing this you'll feel more safe doing this stuff and you'll be like bruh you'll be like me bro i'm an idiot i'm stupid that was the easiest thing i have ever done dog how did i not know to do the, honestly the biggest thing for me was how to type in the numbers shit you not that's what confused the crap out of me and what you needed to do to overclock your cpu like the ring ratio and then your CPU core voltage, which is the volts. Ring ratio is your overclock speed. What the 45 meant, which is a 4.5 gigahertz overclock. That is what confused me. Like what numbers meant, how, how the numbers worked, what you're seeing in your BIOS. Like the numbers that you'll get for your overclock in the majority of videos you see on YouTube. Like I got my CPU to 4.5. 4.5 gigahertz but that's not what your bios says your bios doesn't say 4.5 gigahertz overclock use this it says 4500 megahertz you need to type in 45 you know what i mean it's like it was the numbers and how the numbers worked that confused me which is why i explained it the way i did in the video so yeah i know this video is incredibly freaking long guys i hope that everything works out for you let me know what you get your cpu up to for the overclock and that sort of stuff so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to support it with a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.